Welcome to today's lecture on the topic Downstream Processing Technology. So DPT that is Downstream Processing Technology is very very essential for any product to get marketed. So before a product is formed you have three major steps to be done. First includes UPT that is Upstream Processing where you try to formulate the media for production of any uh, uh, compounds and then you have fermentation where you convert the substrate into products and finally you have downstream processing technology which will help in purifying and polishing the final product so that the product is ready for marketing. So coming to the table of contents let us see a little bit highlight on what is DPT what are the various biotechnological processes and their advantages, factors which are affecting the efficient design of a downstream processing technology, the need for downstream processing technology and a broad outline of downstream processing technological steps for bioproduct recovery. Processing technological steps for bioproduct recovery. So coming to DPT, DPT is one important step which is very very essential and which is widely used in most of the biotechnological industries. So whether it might be pharmaceutical industry, whether it might be drug industry, food industry, chemical industry, each and every industry will use this kind of steps so that they can purify their product to a maximum extent so that it can be marketable and the company can make profits from this. So the main steps which are involved in downstream processing technology which is after UPT and fermentation is isolation of the product where you try to isolate the product of interest. So this will be in the crude form. So once you isolate in the crude form you will have to recover it in further purified form. So there might be few steps you have to do for this. So there will be a series of unit operations that you might do like you may try to use filtration for isolation or you may try to use centrifugation. So it depends on what kind of system is yours. You will choose appropriate technique for recovering the products and once you have recovered it you will try to purify it further to enrich the concentration of the product in the final stage. And finally once you have enriched the product by various techniques so you can try to use chromatography, you can try to use extraction, you can try to use adsorption. So where using all this or some of these techniques you can purify your product to the maximum extent and once you have purified it you will send it to the final polishing steps or it is called as the formulation steps where you will try to make the product ready for packaging. So this involves basically the drying steps so that the excess moisture content which is present in the sample is removed by these steps. And finally the uh, polishing steps also include uh, uh, crystallization sometimes. So crystallization and drying are these uh, uh, the main major steps which comes under the polishing techniques. So uh, a series of unit operations might be used in downstream processing and once you use the series or set of unit operations you finally get a product of marketable quantity. So this is what is the difference between separation technique and downstream processing. So separation technique as it is might be used just for separation. Okay, I want to separate A from B. So I use this technique and that is not my final product. But when you do a downstream processing of a product, finally you after using a series of separation techniques, you will get a product which can be marketed. So that is the main difference between separation techniques and downstream processing. So a little bit details on uh, UPT and fermentation so that we understand the importance of these steps also so that the DPT steps can be done sequentially in a better manner. So once you have done your UPT and fermentation right then only it is good choice to go or continue the experiments for DPT. Imagine you have done the UPT and there is contamination by some chance ok. So there is no point continuing this stage for fermentation and DPT because for each and every step there is a lot of energy which is required plus there a lot of money is required. 
so if there is some problem in first step itself it's best choice to uh, forget about that batch and start a fresh batch instead of wasting time till going till dpt and then leading to issues because you will not get the final yield or final purity that you have intended because of some contaminations present in the sample so this is one important thing that we have to take into consideration and as i told you this upt and dpt are both interdependent on each other so if your upt is right definitely your upt dpt also can go right if your upt steps are only wrong then no point continuing to do the dpt for these products so coming to uh, how to make this uh, process economical okay so we can make this economical by trying to use certain cheap carbon sources or cheap carbon substrates so this indirectly makes your entire downstream processing uh, uh expensive sometimes if your carbon source is very costly okay so you'll have to uh, look for alternatives and see that finally how you can try to reduce your final dsp cost so this is one important thing so this is just an example to tell you carbon substrates so it can be something else also okay so if in, instead of trying to use pure compounds okay there are like uh, imagine you're trying to produce ethanol so instead of using pure glucose you can use certain source of naturally available glucose as a raw material so in that way you can try to reduce your downstream processing cost involved and finally if the cost is going to decrease in these steps definitely the final product cost will decrease and that product will have a good market and once you have a market the company can make profits so it is all interconnected so we have to see to it how can we make the process profitable so coming to little bit details on biotechnological processes so we all know we are working on lot of biotechnological products like cells enzymes and now we can see we have spoken we are using vaccines so these are all your biotechnological products and all these products are produced by upt fermentation dpt and various other steps involved in that so you have a something called as classical biotechnology where you try to produce some product in a natural way so production of ethanol from natural yeast is a natural uh, uh, cycle but now we have something called as rdna you might have heard about it yeah rdna technology yes so this can be used to produce it's also called as recombinant dna so you try to introduce a foreign gene into a organism so that it can do its job even better so imagine with classical way it could produce the product in 16 hours or 18 hours using rdna technology so same thing can be produced within one hour or two hours so you can imagine how much product can be produced within the same time now because within the same time your doubling time is very fast in this case after you have done the rdna technology so this is one important sector you might have heard about genetic engineering so this is widely uh, uh, acceptable and there are a lot of industries which are coming up with this technologies so that they can produce their product in large scale so a lot of organisms are explored using this rdna technology for production of most of the biotechnological products so coming to its advantages over the conventional chemical processes these kind of uh, uh, biotechnological processes are very specific they are efficient they are energy saving and it is usually a clean technique because we don't use a lot of harsh chemicals which can lead to environmental issues and uh, finally we can try to produce a lot of uh, products of industrial value so we have different kinds of products that can be developed so like you have the categorization so it can be high value low volume or it can be low value high volume so i'll just give you an example for high value low volume so that is insulin so this has got very high value and it is produced in low volume whereas you have low value high volume so low value high volume means you are producing in large volume but you have low value for it so that is ethanol so that can be one example so these kind of products there is wide range in which you can try to produce it and main disadvantages might be sometimes because of the viscous broth that you have so this viscosity of the broth if it is increasing due to the uh, organism growth it can lead to fouling of equipments in some uh, cases so that might be an issue sometimes and high volume like if you have too much volume handling of this huge volume might be a difficult task so you should try to uh, optimize the conditions so that your uh, problems are reduced and you will have to 
check for the right equipment so that designing of the equipment is done perfectly and you don't under design or over design it so whatever is required based on that specification a specific equipment has to be used so that these issues of viscosity and other problems can be nullified so coming to efficient design of downstream processing so the main aim of this downstream processing is to maximize the yield at minimum cost so when you are trying to use some downstream processing steps for purification and uh, polishing of a product you have to keep one thing in mind that you have to have minimum steps okay because during each step there is a chance of losing some part of the product so there can be manual errors or there can be machine errors so if you try to increase your dpt steps definitely in each step your loss will going to increase and if your loss is increasing definitely your final product purity and the concentration of it will definitely get hampered so this is what is very very essential you have to see what speed is required what size is required so basically the design of dsp has to be done effectively and one more thing we have to take care is where is my product present so that is nothing but your location of the product so it depends on whether my product is intracellular or extracellular i hope the concept of intracellular and extracellular is known to you so like if your cell is producing the product within itself then it will be called as a intracellular product but if your cell is producing the product and releasing it into the into the broth in which it is present then that kind of product will be called as a extracellular product so ethanol is a example for extracellular product and insulin is a example for intracellular product so in this way based on where my product is present my downstream processing for these kind of products is going to be different so we will be studying about that in the future lectures coming to the concentration so this also becomes a important task for us while selecting because when you choose a particular downstream processing step finally your step should be such that it will help in increasing the concentration of the product because finally i want to sell 99% pure product just imagine so i'll have to use certain steps there to make it from 20% to 90% or something of that sort so your concentration of the product initially also matters because once you have some concentration then only you can try to enrich it so in this way concentration of the product also uh, becomes a factor for us apart from that what is the final use of the product so this has to be taken at most importance so whether my product will be used as a animal supplement or whether it is be used for a treatment of a disease so i've just put an example there of vitamin b12 you can just have a look at it so if vitamin b12 is required for treatment of anemia okay it's a treatment of anemia if you're trying to use vitamin b12 then it should be in the highly pure form but if the same vitamin b12 is required for a food supplement for animal then the highly pure vitamin b12 is not necessary a crude form of it is necessary so this has to be decided what is the final use of the product and based on that a suitable dsp to that level can be done and then the product can be polished and packaged so that is also an important thing to be considered and finally you have to think about economics also as i told you you cannot think of having some kind of downstream processing step which will drastically increase the final product cost of your uh, final product cost because if it is increasing the final product cost definitely it will have a problem when it reaches the market nobody will try to buy your product because if your product will be costly and if you do not have a market definitely your company will go into loss so in that way economic reasoning has to be done perfectly and apart from that you have to check about the size and price of the product so marketable size like what amount i need to produce every year so based on the targets whether i can produce it all that has to be taken into consideration so in this way we can try to design a effective dsp and these are the factors on which a effective dsp can be designed so how much cost will it uh, incur for dpt okay if you have something on that it is something like it varies okay based on what kind of product you're trying to develop but usually it becomes in this range of 20 to 80% so it depends on what kind of product you're trying to develop if it is a low value high volume product then it might be something else if it is a high value product your dpt cost will be more if it is a low value product your dpt cost will be less so in this way within this range you can have a variation but some amount will definitely be incurred in dpt cost apart from this you should have some idea on ex situ dsp and in situ dsp 
So what is what do you understand from the term ex situ? So it is outside, and in situ means within. So if you are trying to process the broth within the vessel, so if you are trying to use a fermentation tank, and within this vessel, if you are trying to process it, then it will be called as in situ DSP. But if you are trying to ferment in a fermenter, collect the broth outside, and then process it further, that will be called as ex situ DSP. So most of the times we try to go for ex situ DSP because all the unit operations will be used separately. So most of the cases they may try to go for ex situ DSP, but there are options for in situ DSP also. So coming to the need for DPT, so basically these DPT steps are very very essential for volume reduction. So if you have like 500 liters of broth, within this 500 liters your product might be some 500 ml. Okay, so you'll have to reduce the volume from that 500 liters broth to get your final product, which is 500 liters. So this will, uh, DPT steps will help in reducing this volume and removing the contaminants from your sample. Contaminants in that uh, sense, not uh, actual contaminants, the different other products which are there, which is not your final product. To separate that from your final product, you can try to use this system. Apart from this, you can enrich your product. As I told you, you can use uh, extraction. You can use adsorption. So using this technique, you can enrich your final product so that the concentration of your product. becomes more in the final uh, stage and you can try to remove certain impurities so here also you can try to use certain uh, flocculating agents agents or coagulating agents or different uh, molecules which has a uh, uh, attraction towards the impurities present in the sample and they can finally be removed from a final product it will also help in stabilizing the product so what do you understand from stabilization so basically when your product is formed it is present with so many other things in the fermentation broth so if something else is produced uh, along with your product there's a chance that if it is left for long your product may get destabilized because of the other products present in the sample so if you have to keep for a specific time so you might have heard about residence time so they tell you keep this for 24 hours and then separate it because after 24 hours if you keep your product can get destabilized So in this way, you will have to stabilize your product. So DPT is one step which can help you in stability of your product, and in that sense, it helps you in preventing denaturation also, and it will help you in achieving the final specification that you want for your product. So whether I want to treat for anemia or whether I want to use as an animal feed, based on that, what concentration of that particular product is required and what purity is required, based on that, we can uh, try to use it. so in this way you can try to have dpt and this is the most important need of dpt so this is just to show you a fermentation system okay fermentation unit how it looks and this is in a industrial scale where you have a series of fermenters connected together because it is large scale so this might be a small scale which is used in uh, industry okay small industry but this is a large scale industry where they are producing might be so many so much uh, tons per day or somewhat of that sense okay so there you can see a series which is connected so this is entirely fermentation and after this you will have the dpt step you have a fermentation broth with you okay so you will have solid and liquid with that So now the first step in DPT will be solid liquid separation. So I want to separate the solid content from the liquid content in it. So you can use various techniques like centrifugation, sedimentation, filtration, flocculation, flotation. So based on the requirement any technique can be used for solid liquid separation. So once you have separated your solid and liquid, so the next thing that comes to our mind is whether my product is intracellular or whether my product is extracellular. so if it is extracellular as i told you the product will get released so if the product is getting released it is present in the supernatant so when you do a solid liquid separation you will have your product in the supernatant so collect the supernatant and process that further but if my product is intracellular so intracellular means the product is present within the cells so if it is present within the cells i will have to disrupt the cells so only if i disrupt the cells i can release my product and then i can purify it formulate it whatever i want to do so for cell disruption you have various methods you can go for mechanical methods of cell disruption which re requires a lot of heat and other things and you or you can go for non mechanical methods of cell disruption so depending upon your product uh, 
uh, biocompatibility and whether it is thermally stable you can decide whether mechanical method of treatment is required or non mechanical method of disruption is required so once you disrupt the cell again you can have a solid liquid separation and now your product will be present in the supernatant because you have already disrupted the cell and your product is released into the supernatant and once you do the solid liquid separation again your product will definitely come into the liquid so now you will collect the liquid and process it further so that is the difference between extracellular product further processing and intracellular product processing so once you have processed that next you can do the extraction step so this is basically done to enrich the product further to make it more concentrated so you can use any of the extraction systems for this uh, particular step and once you extract it you can further concentrate it using your uh, resins ion exchange resins you can try to use evaporation systems and finally you can purify it using ion exchange chromatography so various chromatographic techniques based on the requirement can be decided and used and you can purify your product even further so once you have a high purified product you can formulate the product using crystallization where you convert the liquid products into solid crystals or you can try to use freeze drying technique it is also called as lyophilization so there also you can sublimate the product so that you convert them into solids without any liquid content and that can be stored for long time so in this way by final formulation you are trying to increase the shelf life of the product so definitely if your shelf life of the product is high it can be there in the market for long time and if it is there for long time you can make profit from that particular product so in that way company works a lot for formulation they see to it the shelf life of the product is more so once they have more shelf life definitely you can make more profit from that product so in this way a typical design for downstream processing for any kind of products can be decided so based on what kind of product is yours so if my product is ethanol okay just imagine my product is ethanol so if i have ethanol i told you ethanol is extracellular product so since it is extracellular i do not have cell disruption technique there directly uh, i do a solid liquid separation after uh, 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 saccharomyces has converted uh, glucose to ethanol and i have the liquid content with me and that will be further purified but imagine i have insulin insulin is intracellular product there i'll have to disrupt the e coli cells okay imagine i'm using e coli strain for uh, production of insulin by genetic engineering so there i'll have to disrupt the cells and then isolate it and then purify it so in this way your product uh, dpt steps will differ based on what kind of product is yours whether it is a extracellular product and whether it is a intracellular product and again whether your product is low value high volume or high value low volume so based on this you can decide about your dsp steps and the main thing to remember is minimum steps with maximum profit so this keep this one mantra in your mind so i just uh, put this uh, graph to make you realize that this dpt industry or the industry is uh, widely uh, having scope okay so you can see the uh, projection is shown here there is a upsurge in all these productions you might have heard about because of this covid and all other problems you might have heard about vaccines okay so this vaccine production also is increasing dramatically okay drastically we see a uh, increase in all this so during this production also a lot of dpt steps will be involved so in this way for vaccine production or hormone production antibiotic production for all these you will require a lot of upstreaming fermentation and dpt steps so there is a lot of scope in this area so we need to explore about it so thank you for watching guys do subscribe the channel for more updates